So hold on to your hat, folks. The real estate world's get to, about to get a whole lot more juicier. Brace yourself for a wild ride through the realm of short-term videos where investors are flocking like seagulls to fresh caught fish. So, you know, in this unpredictable world of real estate here in South Florida and in the Fort Lauderdale area, short-term rentals or STRs as they're known, okay, that have caught on quicker than a viral cat video. Why are these the new cool kids in town? So, you know, little history basically once upon a time in a land filled with investment opportunities, the short-term rentals, the STRs, they were like the Cinderella's to the real estate ball. They're dazzling everybody with promises of cash flow extravaganza. But what makes them so interesting and what makes them so popular and so alluring? I'm glad you guys asked, okay? So folks, imagine this. You add a short-term rental property to your real estate investment for portfolio and, and voila, okay? Cash flow grows faster than a rumor in a small town. It's almost like finding kind of a hidden treasure chest full of gold doubloons, if you will, okay? To basically fund your present investments and your present endeavors, but, hey, but also to give you very, very quick cash flow to, to be able to fund investments in future real estate endeavors. Your portfolio kind of expands like a champ. It's basically flexing its muscles and it makes kind of all of your other muscles, all of your other investments green with envy. But basically, folks, but hang on, we're not done. And basically, if I can get a little drum roll going here, because basically we've got an even bigger surprise for you. And, you know, as kind of a result, of the short-term rental market. We're getting ready to talk about the, one of the rising stars of the short-term rental market. Those are called condo tells. Now you may be scratching your head and kind of wondering, what the hell is a condo tell? So folks, just sit back, kind of relax. We're gonna tell you exactly what it is and let you in some of the secrets. You know, kind of think of condo tells as kind of the chameleon of the, of the short-term rental world. They're basically, they're a master of disguise, if you will. It gives you all kinds of benefits. They get profitability, okay, a strong return on your investment, okay, and, and you also get to use it yourself from time to time, you know, whenever, whenever you're really looking for it. And it gives you a little bit more flexibility in all those short-term rentals opportunities, those counterparts. Again, everybody's kind of going, so what the hell is a condo tell, okay? You know, folks, just kind of sit back and, and join us on this little roller coaster ride through the world of short-term rentals and condo tells. Basically, you know, for short-term rentals, you can check out our other videos on short-term rentals, okay? We'll answer most of your burning questions, we'll unravel kind of some of the mysteries of it, and we'll kind of equip you with at least the knowledge to go through and be able to look at it, look at the condo tells you know with a lot more information okay and a lot more educated eye so what are condo tells Condo hotels, or condo tells for short, have popped up all over the past couple years. This stage is all kind of all around Florida, okay? And while condominiums have always served as, as a great investment for rental properties, both short term and long term, okay? It's also been, condos have also been a great option for vacation rentals and whatnot, you know, especially since everybody's got a bad taste in their mouth from the standpoint of the, all the time shifts and all that kind of stuff. The condo tell goes way beyond what a typical condo offers or what a typical short term rental. Condo tells are like hybrid properties, so they're composed of individually owned units like you would with a condo, okay? But they operate like hotels, so you're not bound by some of the traditional laws and traditional rules and regulations for short-term rentals that apply to their short-term rental market. So basically, you know, you purchase it, you get a deed and ownership of the property, okay? And when you're using the unit yourself, you get access to all the amenities of the hotel. When you're not using it, you have the option of, you know, of going out to leveraging the hotel and the hotel management systems and basically who they are and their access to their premier clients and basically using their name and, and branding to, to rent your property out for you. Now the other thing is, is that it, you know if you decide at some point in time you don't want to you don't you want to sell it, you can basically sell it like you would any other condominium. So why condo hotels? Well well condo hotels are typically designed as higher end resorts. In addition to the basic logic of the unit, there are generally amenities that are included as part of hotel amenities that you ordinarily may not find except in very, very high-end condominium units themselves. I mean, those can include stuff like daily parking, on-site dining, daily housekeeping, fitness centers, you know, valet parking, on-site concierge services. And here's the thing, the travelers, folks coming down here, they can rent units from a managing company just as they would book from a hotel room, and they receive the kind of the best of both worlds. They get all the amenities of being in a hotel and having everything done, but they also have the option of being able to be in an actual condominium type unit where if they want to, if they want to dine in, they can dine in and they can cook there. Okay. And it's basically, you get full kitchens, you get living rooms. Okay. You can also get access to, you know, the concierge services and you get the gyms and restaurants and retail spaces. So it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of the best of both worlds coming through. So folks, I'm Kevin Morris. Welcome to our channel, Living in Fort Lauderdale with Kevin Seuss. And you know, we've been doing these YouTube weeks for a couple years now. And you know, as, as much as we love doing our videos, as much as we keep going back and making sure that everybody gets informed, one of the things that we really 
really, really love doing is working with folks to try to help them get answers to their real estate related questions and kind of shed some light and shed, shed some additional information on this wacky world of real estate down here in South Florida and in the Fort Lauderdale area. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to give us a little call, shoot us a little text, a little email going on. If you want to DM us on Facebook, please feel free. You can, you can click on the calendar link, set up a time where you can chit chat for about 40, 45 minutes and just answer any questions that you guys may have and make sure that we get your questions answered. Go ahead and feel free to subscribe so that you get notified every time, you know, so you can get access to our videos, the, this one and the ones we've done prior to and coming up. And also hit the little bell so you get notified every time we drop a new one. And if you would, please feel free to share the, our link and share the information with other friends and colleagues and family members who you think may be interested in real estate and real estate related issues that are going on down in South Florida and in and around the Fort Lauderdale area. So basically understanding how condo tells work and basically how you can make them work for you. Understanding how condo tells work so you can make the right decision is critical for your success. And there are many things to consider when looking at short term rentals and even more kind of piled on when you look at it from the standpoint of the, the nuances of the condo tell. So we boiled them down to the seven things that we consider the most important. So obviously folks, the first thing is to understand the market. Basically, everybody knows what the first three rules of real estate are, location, location, location. That's basically the market. Now, and there's a lot of different condo hotels or condo tells, depending upon how you want to look at them, that exist throughout South Florida, okay? And they really vary dramatically. And basically, you need to do your homework to really make sure that you understand what each offer in the way of amenities and size, quality of management. Okay. You want a property that's in an excellent location and that's frequented by tourists okay, and has great amenities and entertainment options in the, in the vicinity. Okay. But you also want to make sure that it's, there's enough going on there from the standpoint of the actual market area itself to make sure that it's going to generate the type of cash and the type of rental rates you know, that are going to help you to achieve your goals. Okay. And the other thing that you want to take a look at is from the market perspective is you need to make sure that it's managed by a good hotel brand. In the Fort Lauderdale area, typically we see a lot coming from either Ritz or Hilton and some of the other areas going south of Sunny Isles, you see a lot of stuff coming from Trump Towers. Okay. But you need to make sure that, that the management company has a very, very good brand and a very, very good reputation. Okay, And, and basically the, those different chains and those different reputations are going to really determine how the condo hotel is going to be managed how it's gonna be marketed, okay? And quite frankly, it's gonna to help to define the, the foundation of your relationship with the hotel management company and the hotel management entity. Folks, here's the thing. Before you even get started to get too deep into this, okay? Folks, you need to make sure that you're not afraid to ask any questions, okay? And you know what? If something doesn't sound right or something doesn't feel right, okay? Please feel free to walk away because at the end of the day, okay, once the ink is on the paper, okay, it's yours and you own it and you know, you're not gonna be able to go back and make changes if you don't ask these questions. It's one of the reasons why we so strongly advocate that you work with experts like myself and my team to make sure that we get these questions asked for you and we get the answers for those questions back to you in terms that you can understand, in terms that make it relevant and make sure that it meets with the things that are important to you. The other thing is, is that kind of, you know, what are your rights to basically the unit that you own? Because, you know, as a purchaser, you actually own the unit and all rights and responsibilities and everything are basically, they need to be identified and determined before you decide to sign the paper. And basically, and you need to make sure you understand what those are as long as it's within the terms of the actual hotel management agreement because the hotel management agreement okay is not part of the purchase agreement it's something that you need to be looking at and you need to be aware of and you need to be cognizant of before you sign that purchase agreement for example with a condo tell okay there may be specific blackout dates that you are not able to use, to use the property yourself you may not even be able to go back out and offer it out to some of your friends or some of your family if you're going outside of the condo tell management program so before you finance a condo tell you need to make sure it understands what the rights are that you have with the unit and what some of the restrictions and what some of the qualifications, okay, what some of the limitations may be. And you know what? And some of those things may be significant when it comes to blackout dates. For example, we've talked about this on some of our other videos before. In October, we have what is probably known as one of the most significant boat shows in this hemisphere. It's basically the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. During that period of time, you will not be able to use, and most of the condo tell arrangements that we've seen and we've been involved in, you will not be able to use that the, your property for your own personal use because the revenue potential during that week is so high that those condo management programs, they're booked years and years and years in advance, okay? The other thing comes around holidays too. You may have some thoughts about coming down for Christmas or for Thanksgiving. These are also very, very popular times. So folks, you wanna make sure that you understand what the limitations are and you understand what your rights are as a function of those limitations, especially when it comes to that hotel management program contract that you're gonna be signing. So the other thing, next thing to look at is, you know, what are you responsible for? There are some folks out there that are basically saying, hey, sign up for this condo hotel program and we'll split our revenue with you and you don't have to pay for anything else. 
house. Folks, it really doesn't kind of work that way. It's really, it's a little more involved than that, okay? Here's the thing, at the end of the day, you are the owner of real estate. You're responsible for the contents insurance, you're responsible for the real estate taxes on it, and you're responsible for, you know, for reserves and, and whatnot, okay? The other thing too is, is that, you know, you also generally in a, in a condo, okay, most of the time you also have free access to the common areas, you know, pools, any type of other resources that are down there, okay? You know, elevators and whatnot. In the condo hotel, that's not the case. I mean, the condo hotel is being run by a hotel and they're looking to maximize their revenue and their income and everything they can do. All of those areas, the elevators, the swimming pools, the restaurants, the fitness centers, those are all owned by a third party, okay? And in some cases, there may be additional charges for you to be able to utilize that pool or utilize that concierge service, or you have to, may have to pay to park there. These are things that you need to be cognizant of, you need to check, make sure you're aware of it, okay? Now, these fees are generally paid by guests and owners alike. So even if you own property there, you may have to pay to park. Whereas in a traditional condo, okay, basically, you're in there, you, you're granted a parking spot, you pull your car in and life is good and off you go. A lot of times, I mean, we've, we've had folks where, where they've had to come back and renegotiate the deals at, towards the end because they didn't think to ask or they brought us in after the fact they didn't think to ask about things like parking spots, things like fitness facilities, things like swimming pools. I mean, basically, folks, everything is on the table and everything is basically up for discussion. So, you know, digging more into that, okay, really, basically, who pays for what? Okay, as we spoke about, okay, you know, you're the owner of the property and you're financially responsible for stuff like real estate taxes, stuff like insurance, you know, monthly fees to cover the maintenance of the unit, common areas, and also the reserve fund. I mean, they will have reserve funds because there, there are things that need to be done to the building itself that unit is a part of. The other thing, too, is, is that you're also, as a unit owner, you're responsible for in stuff inside the, for all the things inside the unit, furniture, fixtures, and anything like that. Now, if it's rented out, okay, during that period of time, and typically the way it's handled is if anything is busted or broken or anything like that, the guests themselves will be billed for that. It's all taken care of. But you need to understand, you may need to go back and change linens. You may need to update the furniture. Now, folks, most all of these things that need to be done in order to establish a consistency across the whole of the piece, you're going to be using the hotel management's furniture. You're going to be using their linen. You're going to be using their stuff. And there's a cost associated with that. And I will tell you from experience, it is not necessarily the cheapest cost. Okay, they're going to be looking at basically the stuff is high end, okay, and you're going to pay for it. Let's start getting to the brass tacks. So really, what's your earning potential? Okay, the way that condo tells differ from more traditional short-term rentals that are going through like Airbnb, VRBO, Booking.com, okay, is that typically there's going to be a split. Now, what the split really is, it's basically how the revenue coming in is basically allocated between you as the owner and the management company or the condo management company from the standpoint of who's managing it, okay? Those splits can range anywhere from 35% to 60%, okay? And by that I mean it can be as little as 35% to you and as much as 60% to the management company, okay? A lot of that comes down to the number of different things that depends upon the chain that you're looking at, who you're working with. It depends upon what other costs you're willing to incur yourself as opposed to having the hotel management company take on those costs. It also depends upon the length of time you're in the agreement. Those, these are kind of things. So, you know, and you may have a little bit higher split going towards a hotel with some of the more premium brands like Ritz or like Hilton and, and, and Trump, as opposed to some of the other ones that are, that are a little lesser known. But if they can charge more, okay, then basically 40% of something that is, is higher priced then 60% of something else may ultimately help you to achieve your financial goals around this a lot quicker, okay? The other thing is, is that whatever comes through, now that split is just how the revenue is done. You need to make sure that you sit down with experts like myself and my team to make sure you understand what all the costs are involved. We've talked about real estate taxes, we talked about insurance, we talked about some of the maintenance, okay? But you need to make go back and make sure that, that you are out there projecting going forward. A lot of the costs that we talked about are either monthly costs or costs that are within a year. You need to be able to make sure that you, you're forecasting out for any types of reserves, any types of increases that are going on. Now, management companies, we've done a lot of business with Hilton, for example. They'll allow you to kind of keep things on a running basis and they true things up every quarter. So, you know, nobody wants to be getting checks or sending wires back and forth every couple days. You know, this is how much money came in, this is how much money was taken out. So they do basically do either a monthly or a quarterly true up much more stronger proponents for the quarterly true up. It just gives everybody an opportunity to kind of is taken care of and gives you a chance, an opportunity to go back and take a look at everything. Because basically once everything is done and you start going forward, it can become very, very confusing if you're trying to reconcile stuff on a weekly or a monthly basis. So basically, you know, but you need to be taking a look at this from the standpoint of what your potential costs are going to be. And the management company, they're usually more than willing to kind of help out and give you an idea of what's reasonable and customary on those costs. And that kind of leads into basically evaluating the management company themselves. Do they, is 
is the property managed well? Probably the number, the number one thing. Okay, is there a lot of potential in there for bringing in high revenue guests, high revenue and short term tenants? And the other thing is, is that make sure that they have a historical record of basically things, of key things like expenses, costs, occupancy. You know, are there times of the year when you can expect to have higher rent rates and, you know, subsequently expect higher revenue so that, that you can go back and kind of translate that into your own forecasting piece. The other thing is, is that, you know, kind of how does a management company, how does a management entity, how do they market the property? We all know about Hilton. We all know about Hilton Honors. We all know about Ritz as part of the bond, you know, as part of their, uh, their frequent traveler program. But how are they going out and marketing your property as different from all of the other properties that are down in the Fort Lauderdale area, uh, you know, as opposed to some of the ones that are traditional areas Airbnb or VRBO or Hotel.com, what are they doing to differentiate themselves? If they can't sell you on it, then they're sure as heck not going to be able to sell somebody else online. If they can't sell you in person, they're not going to be able to sell it online. What options do you have to basically be in there yourself? Do you have a couple of weeks a year that are yours? And you know, is, is there an additional cost of that or is there a reduced cost of that? Some management programs and some management uh, agreements have where, where you can have as many as two or three weeks. Some a year, some of it basically limits you to five to 10 days. So you need to kind of take a look at that and, and balance all that stuff out with your plans and what your strategy is. Now, one of the things you really need to understand is financing. Now, most condo hotel owners or most condo hotel purchasers, they pay cash. Okay, and condo hotels are something relatively new, and because they're relying very, very heavily on things like cash flow and, and profit and loss, okay, most many, many lenders, okay, they're just not equipped. Now, we do have a couple of lenders that we work with that specialize in condo hotel financing, and we're, sure, and we're more than happy to share that information with you, okay. But you know, kind of words of wisdom, if you will, or a little bit of education, okay. This is an investment property. If you're thinking that you're going to be paying the same interest rate as you would for a principal residence, we'll manage an expectation right now and tell you it's not going to happen. But the things that you need to be looking at, you know, are stamped from the standpoint of you factor the, the cost of financing in if you're going to finance, okay? And you want to make sure that you keep pace with that because if you're financing, chances are your lender's going to want to have you, it's going to want to have real estate taxes taken out and they're going to make sure that you have adequate insurance on the property yourself. The lender approval, for, as I said, it differs a little bit from traditional loans and whatnot because, because they're looking at it from an investment perspective. So like they're going to be looking at the unit itself. In addition to your credit worthiness for it, they want to talk about what are the historical occupancy rates rates and what occupancy rate is needed to make sure that you have positive cash flow to support the income or the revenue that is needed to fund this purchase. The other thing too is, is that this, you know, I don't want to try to scare anybody or anything like that. This is not really much different than, than going through if you're self-employed or if you have a lot of your income that comes from investments or something that's, that's not a traditional W-2 type of a thing. And, you know, lenders are used to seeing this, many of them are. The ones that we work with on condo hotels, they certainly look at seeing it, okay? And they know the questions to ask and they will assist you with making sure that you get the information that you need, not only from the management company or for the management entity, to make sure that they have the information they need to make a decision, but also information you're gonna need so you can set up your financial pro forma so that you know where you are pretty much all the time because you do, the last thing you wanna be is kind of a rudderless ship going down through the ocean down here in South Florida and around the Fort Lauderdale area, especially when it comes to short-term rentals and investment real estate. So folks, is a, are condo hotels a good option for you? Okay, you know, I'm here to tell you, condo hotels can be an excellent option for individuals who wanna own a second home and wanna have an investment property, okay, and they really don't want to have to go through all of the rules and regulations and legislation of renting out short-term rentals through Airbnb or VRBO and doing it yourself. Because remember folks, in the state of Florida, okay, if you're gonna be managing short-term rentals yourself, you're gonna, you need a license to do that. Whereas if all you're doing is relying on the hotel management program, that's not needed. You don't have to go through that thing. So, you know, there are many considerations to look at before you make, before you sign the contract. You know, again, doing your homework, okay, and getting working with skilled professionals and experts like myself and my team are critical to ensuring the success of any real estate endeavor, especially when you're looking to something that is in short-term rentals or you're looking at something like condo tells. Any questions, please feel free to drop in the box below. Again, give us a call, shoot us a little text, send us a little email, hey, set up a Calendly link. We'd be happy to talk to you, ask and answer any questions that you may have.